What's up, Marvel Snappers? Welcome to another Math Breakdown. Today we are going to take a look at two cards that came up a lot in the comments of my last breakdown that analyzed how America Chavez affects your deck. There will be a link to that video in the description of this one. Quicksilver and Domino have similar effects to America Chavez, but they affect the deck in a very different way. Starting with Quicksilver, a card that everyone is familiar with as it is in the starter deck when you begin playing the game. Quicksilver is a 1 energy 2 power card that always starts in your opening hand, but what are the implications of this? The probability of drawing any future card uses a population or deck size of 11. You might think this could increase consistency of future draws like America Chavez, but you are also at negative one draw. Since you are guaranteed to draw Quicksilver, that is one draw that cannot be another card, so Quicksilver actually has the opposite effect. Because of that negative draw, Quicksilver reduces the odds of drawing any particular card from the deck. The impact of America Chavez's negative draw does not take effect until turn six, but Quicksilver's lasts the whole game. We can see from this table how the odds are impacted for a given turn. The earlier turns are impacted the most. As the deck gets smaller, the impact of the negative draw does slowly decrease. Except if you are looking to draw a combination of cards. If we look at the numbers for drawing a combination of cards, the numbers get weird with two successes required from the population as the negative draw, combined with the reduced population size of the deck, creates a curve in the middle of a game. You are impacted most if you are looking to find a combination of cards by turn 3 or 4. The difference isn't that big. Is it really that bad to run Quicksilver? In my opinion, yes. Quicksilver may seem like a tempo or board presence advantage, but the quality of this card is far too low. Quicksilver can be killmongered, provides no immediate bonuses due to its lack of effects, and has even less value than a card like Misty Knight who can be buffed by the card Patriot or the location Washington DC. If you are running another one cost card, you may just draw it on turn one anyways, negating any possible benefit of Quicksilver. The odds of drawing a one cost card on turn one with one in your deck is 33%, with two it goes up to 57.6%, and with three in the deck it goes up to 74.5%. One cost cards don't even need to be played on turn one, as they can fit into future turns if you are not having a perfect energy curve. If Quicksilver is played as the only one cost card to guarantee a turn one play, the gained tempo is not worth the loss of card advantage. When we're first starting out in Marvel Snap, it feels good to always have a play on turn one. Then the first time you take Quicksilver out of the deck and have a game where you miss playing a card on turn one, that can have a jarring effect. Although with more play, you come to learn that passing on a turn, especially the early turns, is not always a bad thing. Card advantage, being more cards in hand, equals more options. Any card will have more value than Quicksilver. Holding cards can often be advantageous as you can see what the locations are and where the opponent has committed their resources. Your opponent's early plays may even indicate the strategy of their deck. When played turn one, sometimes Quicksilver can even be in the way based on how the game ends up playing out. Locations or your opponent's cards can restrict board space, and the two power of Quicksilver ends up not being worth that board space. More cards in hand also increases your perceived range by the opponent, giving them more potential cards to play around. The more information present face up on the board, the more information you give your opponent. In summary, Quicksilver is bad. Now this is my opinion, but the math and theory points towards this conclusion. This may have been how most players felt already, 
but hopefully the data explains this conclusion further. Now moving on, let's take a look at Domino, a two energy three power card that says you always draw this on turn two and not before. Similar to Quicksilver, we see a general decrease in consistency outside of turn one where you actually get a slight boost. Turn one and turn two have the same odds with Domino as turn two is the turn we lose the potential to draw any other card. From turn three on, we see the same decrease in consistency as Quicksilver, whether an individual card or a combination of cards. We can take a quick look at the odds of drawing a two cost card by turn two under normal circumstances. With one in the deck, it's 41.7%. Two brings it up to 68.2%. And with three in the deck, you're up to 84.1%. Again, you may not even need a two cost card to play on turn two, as it can fill out your curve on a later turn and are great on turn six with a four cost tech card like Shang-Chi or Enchantress. In summary, Domino is mediocre. It is more power than Quicksilver and has better odds of sticking on the board, which makes more of an argument for the tempo advantage this card can provide. By turn two, you know two of the three locations and potentially have some information on the opponent's strategy, meaning it is less of a blind play than Quicksilver on turn one. There are niche cases with cards like Lockjaw or Jubilee where the negative draw helps keep the quality of cards in your deck to be pulled out onto the board, but Domino also reduces the odds of drawing those enablers. It will be deck dependent, but generally this card does not give you much of an advantage. Now let's take a quick look at the numbers should you actually have both of these cards in your deck. If playing one is bad for draw consistency, it makes sense that playing both is even worse. In the Jubilee example, you would be negative 8.3% chance to draw her on turn four, even if you have better hits, in theory, if you draw her. Playing two additional high value cards accomplishes nearly the same thing and gives you more options in the later turns. The reduced consistency is slightly less bad when it comes to combinations of cards as the reduced deck size offsets the reduced draw by a bit, but it is still a large net negative to your consistency. In summary, while these cards may provide a tempo advantage, the impact to card quality, card advantage, and draw consistency is often not worth it. As with all things with Marvel Snap, there are always exceptions. Different decks and playstyles may affect the impact of these negative qualities. There are no golden rules. Statistics can guide our decision making, but do not always provide definitive answers. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you learned anything or if you disagree with anything from this video. Your feedback is always appreciated. If you have any other math-related ideas you would like to see explored, put those in the comments too. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been putting out Marvel Snap videos every day, and your engagement helps the channel grow. I'll see you in the next one.